Welcome back to Race Week Illustrated Garage Talk. The straight line crowd was out in force this past week as Atlanta Motor Speedway held their opener for the Friday Night Drags event, which is held on the track's pit road. The Super Pro Division was the one to watch as Matt Carden scored the win in his Chevy Camaro. Fans were also treated to a special Cadillac-only division that saw Clark Stoddard come away with the win. Matt Harbin scored the win in pro, and Travis Burney won the Street Outlaw victory. Other winners included Jason Kennard, Danny Mason, Shane Ransom, Buddy Patrick, Wayne Breedlove, Darren Lewis, Bobby Bramlett, Ruben Criambo, Daniel Rice, Tony Freeman, James Roberts, Chris Lewis, and Jacob Turner. Up at Anderson Motor Speedway in Anderson, South Carolina, Ben Kay was the fourth driver to cross under the checkered flag in the B Mini Stock feature Friday night, but in the end he ended up as the winner after David Darnell, BJ Thrasher, and Chuck Mitchell failed to pass post-race tech. That moved Kay into the winner's circle with Zach Dillon in second, followed by Chad Campbell, Billy Hockman, and Victor McIntyre. Other winners on the night included Austin Northcutt in BM Modifieds, Avery Burgess in C Mini Stocks, Ricky Burnett in Evergreen Renegades, Wayne Cowart in Front Wheel Drives, Barry Tolleson Jr. in Super Renegades, and Rex Brown in Legends. After a week off courtesy of Mother Nature, Watermelon Capital Speedway in Cordell, Georgia was back in action last week. In the Outlaw Late Model feature, Matthew Ragg and David Hodges Jr. started on the front row and did battle early, racing side by side for the lead. Hodges would come away with the top spot and would motor away for the win. Stuart Dutton finished second with Jimmy Moats third, Billy Chansey fourth, and Matthew Ragg in fifth. Other winners included Jimmy Nasworthy in Enduros, John Tullis in Mini Stock, Joseph Pilato in Pro Challenge, Alex Coffey in Legends, Zach Leonardi in Bandos, and Jeff Smith in Go-Karts. It was double the action in late models at Hickory Motor Speedway in Hickory, North Carolina last week. Jesse LeFevre started out the first of two late model features on the pole and moved out to the early lead. He would stay there, scoring the victory ahead of second place Austin McDaniel. Trey Gibson finished third, followed by Kyle Moon in fourth, and Keith Baumgartner in fifth. Baumgartner would lead the field to the green in the second late model feature and look to have the win in hand, but a late caution bunched the field. And of course, you know what that means. That opened the door for someone else. That someone, Trey Gibson, who made the pass for the lead with three laps to go and held on to score the win. Baumgartner finished second, followed by LeFavors, Josh Wimbish, and Austin McDaniel. Other winners on the night included Jeremy Birch, Mike Newton, Shane Lee, and Tyler McKinney to round out the night's racing. Now back to the Peach State as we travel to Dixie Speedway up in Woodstock, and you know there's a lot of action there. Jody Knowles was the man to beat in the legendary Dirt Oval as he beat out Jake Knowles to bring home the super late model win. Jason Croft finished second, followed by uh, Jason Croft, Tony Knowles, Doug Stevens, and other action on the night included Rucker Orr winning in limited late models, Alan Green in crate late models, Kurt Atkins in Super Bombers, Shannon Etheridge in Pony Stock, and David Beam in Econo Bombers. And finally, to round out the night at Dixie Speedway, Jimmy Wilson won in the Cruiser Division. At East Bay Raceway Park in Tampa, Florida, the magic man, Mark Whitener, jumped out front early and would survive several caution flags and a few close calls from spins in front of him to win the Scott Thompson Memorial. Josh Peacock ran second with Maverick Varnador finishing third, Jeff Matthews fourth, Doug Horton in fifth. Other drivers scoring wins on the night included Dan Darnell in the Old Time Mods, Tim Powers in Open Wheeled Modifieds, and Raymond Van in Four Cylinder Bombers. For more on these stories and others, visit RaceWeekIllustrated.com. Doug, just, just an incredible weekend of racing last yeah. week. Uh, action all over the place. One thing that I noticed is the number of North Georgia local division drivers who were traveling either south to, to Cordell to Watermelon Capital or north up to Anderson Motor Speedway uh, to have a chance of uh, to have a chance to race the loss of Lanier National Speedway in Braselton, Georgia, and the limited schedule that we're seeing from Gresham Motorsports Park uh, this year is really putting a squeeze on the local divisions. And and I mean, you've got guys who are traveling uh, down to Cordell, guys like Matthew Rag, Spanky Hicks, Jimmy Motes, David Murphy, Todd Holder, traveling a, a pretty long distance. That's about a three-hour haul from home. Yeah. For these guys, there's just not enough racing in, in the northern part of the state for these asphalt guys to justify the cost. You've got a lot of others that are just sitting out this year. And think about this: if you could stay going to those racetracks every single week and run for the points championship, you get a little more in your pocket, and there's not enough incentive to try to skip those races and stay 
up in North Georgia if indeed you have the opportunity on a weekend where they conflict too. So you got to, and, and another thing you got to see is I've noticed calling the action at Gresham Motorsports Park myself, some of those names we see in those results weren't there the first week of the season too. So you, you have to wonder if they're just flatly tur- turning down an opportunity to race at Gresham just to stay in the hunt at those places. Well, you've got to, to be able to balance the cost of, of your racing as opposed to what you're bringing in. Can you pay your gas and your tire bill is really uh, a, a lot of what it uh, comes down to. But there is some relief on the way. Gresham Motorsports Park will be racing May 12th yeah. with the uh, Racing Radios 100 Super Late Models. Uh, local divisions. Uh, you'll be calling the action there. It should be a good show. Uh, I, I, we're expected a great show. We talked a lot about it with Dan Elliott last week, folks. It's going to be a little bit higher speeds, but those cars are not going to handle as well as the pro late model cars, so that's why you really put the expert drivers in those super late divisions. And of course, it's only the second race of the year and the first for the super lates, so we're all thinking about that points championship in the end when we have the points winner crowned in uh, October as well. So those drivers may, may have that a little on their mind, but I think it's going to be the cash, the dash of the cash in the trophy, don't you? I agree. And, of course, it being up on the high banks there in Jefferson, Georgia, it's always an exciting race. You Was it 120 they get at the end of the straightaway? Uh, is one ten, wow, one just, yeah. just an incredible <laughs> amount of, of speed. It's scary fast down there and, and should be a great show. For more information on their race, visit uh, racegmp.com. And uh, we, we hope to see you out there. We want to see a big, strong crowd out there for this one, Doug. Yeah, we need to see a big crowd for that. And, of course, you know, it's, it's a great deal to come to Gresham Motorsports Park. But any of these Georgia races, gosh, Dixie Speedway or any of the Tacoa Hartwell, any of the speedways up there in North Georgia, it's great. you got to be there, even Anderson, too. Absolutely. That's what we're all about here on Race Week Illustrated Garage Talks, the hometown heroes. So go out and support your hometown track, folks, whether it's a dirt track, whether it's a drag strip, whether it's an asphalt track. Go out and support your hometown tracks because the bottom line is they won't be there without you. Right, Doug? That, that's correct. Even just down the road here, what, Winder Barrow Speedway, all over the place, they're, they're, they're buried in the hills of Georgia and South Carolina and North Carolina. And th- that's where you're, the drivers you see now in NASCAR got their start. And we've seen, just from Gresham, just my little view of Gresham Motorsports Park, all these different, whether it's Alex Bowman winning the ARCA race or some of the drivers, uh, even uh, was it uh, Miguel Paluto who's racing the trucks now, they got their start here at, at uh, GMP or at some tra- tracks of the local level. That's right. Well, folks, that's going to do it for us uh, here this week on Race Week Illustrated Garage Talk. Don't forget, you can take a look at any of the stories we've talked about this week by visiting raceweekillustrated.com. Next week, we'll be taking a look at some more of the racing action, including results from the 32nd Annual Southern Nationals at Atlanta Dragway. Plus, we'll have another driver sit down and visit with us in our pit road spotlight. Remember, visit raceweekillustrated.com. Can't urge that enough. He's Doug Turnbull. I'm Brandon Reed. This is Race Week Illustrated Garage Talk, and we'll see you at the races.